Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca, and this is the CCM eFlex 4 pad review. Um, as you can see, I got these kind of custom, I, it's obviously options, but single break, external, um, so they're pretty stiff on the core, as you can see. You definitely break them in more if you wanted to, and they'll definitely break in, but um, pretty stiff pad. Uh, so I guess let's jump into that. One of the things about these pads is how soft the boot is, which, and it is ridiculous. Um, this thing flexes like crazy. I have never seen a boot this soft. Um, I question the longevity longevity of this pat this boot because it is so soft even the bauer 2x's which have a 100 degree boot very similar to this aren't as soft as that and that's crazy um, i didn't notice any negatives when playing it's just something i wanted to comment on because i've never seen something that soft maybe it will be totally fine i haven't worn them long enough i can't comment on that but it's something i would watch out for um so i'm trying to think what else talk about this from this view so far um stiffness you saw these are they're pretty straight straight out of the box unless you order i don't think you can order these curved ccm does have pretty good options in terms of custom uh, like options for the actual pads themselves you can still do different things on the light channel for the widths um you can do different strapping options like a bunch of different leather straps on it different internal brakes different external brakes so ccm still lets you do a lot of stuff like that which is pretty custom from a uh, I mean, like Vaughn and Brian's and them do that too. But Bauer for a long time, you couldn't do any custom options. Bauer is kind of going back towards that. But I'll give CCM credit for that because you can really make this pad pretty dialed into you um, based on how you do everything like that. So I guess good job there. Um, I did not use speed skin on the sliding, and you'll see that closer. We'll talk about that in a second. This pad is really soft base. Um, which I guess we'll, we'll show in a closer view too. Uh, I, from this one, this angle, I guess I'll talk about graphics. Um, graphics aren't really that important to me when ordering pads because generally you can make them custom and do something you really like on them. Um, I usually love CCM graphics. I love the Premier Gla graphic. I had like one gripe about it. CCM kind of always does it where their catching gloves are always like slightly off. And if you match it perfectly, it doesn't look right when you actually hold them. Um, this graphic I thought was one of the worst that CCM has ever done. I really like how you have that the separation on the top piece here all the way down. That's pretty cool. Um, and I, you can get some pretty interesting designs out of that. Even this one with the dual tone is pretty interesting there. But I hated how they did kind of, you couldn't make any, I found that you couldn't make anything flow. It's either this graphic looks very busy or it's like just a pad cut into like one piece and then that's it. So you can never do anything like this direction and it was either like, oh, like a kind of a spike, a spike or the whole pad colored one thing with detailing. I never found something I really liked that was still um, kind of had detail to it, but wasn't just a huge section being a pad. There were a couple NHL designs I kind of looked at. I ended up, this is like the Markstrom set and um, someone else too, I can't remember off the top of my head. But there was some with, where they used like the fangs. Bobrovsky set was always just like, here's a section of color. And then, and so I, I like looking at designs of pads and how things are really, and like how you can make things really custom and really unique. And I don't find that the case with these. Um, every time CCM posts a picture, someone posts a picture, you kind of instantly know, okay, that's a section they did. I find the premiere, there was a couple of designs I saw where I was like, whoa, you can do that. And then I look closer and you could. This one, I never really found that to be the case, so I'm kind of disappointed in that. But again, it's just graphics and it's not a big deal. Um, these are 35 plus 1.5. I decided to go with that because I found the 35.2 with the Premiere to be a bit tall. Um, or at least they, I found the thigh rise were interfering with each other a bit. But it wasn't the height really, it was just how the Premiere is curved and I didn't order totally straight. And it's the thickness of the Premiere as well. So these ones I had no issues with. Um, I'm probably, if I were to order these again, I'd probably go with a 35 too, just to give a little bit extra room on the thighs, but it's not a big deal. And these are only like about that much shorter than all my other pads. Um, so we'll jump down here. So I have to give CCM huge credit for this. This pad has a very soft face. 
and it, it really kills rebounds. Pucks hit it and they die pretty quick or they definitely go a lot shorter than Bowers, especially, especially Vapors. Um, and for like, any pad I've worn recently, to be honest, this one, even like the genetics, the rebounds on these are softer than on, like, on, than those. So if you're looking for that, this is from my experience so far, probably one of the best options. I haven't worn V8, so I can't comment on that. Um, so huge props to CCM there. And one of the reasons why that's a, a legitimate praise and a really big praise is because this pad still has a very stiff core and it's something that CCM has managed to do. Um, that's the stiff core, how it doesn't bend at all. It's something CCM has managed to do while lighting, like lightening this pad a lot. So this pad is the lightest pad I have currently besides my G2 Warriors, which are smaller. Um, now this is half an inch smaller in height, but I believe this comes under four pounds for a 35 inch pad. And that's a 36, that ends up being like a 36 Bauer and 36 Brines. And that's very impressive. These things are crazy light. So I got to give them massive props for that. Um, but I'll get to that lightness in a second. But, and they, so they did a really good job with how dead these rebounds are with that lightness. Uh, so again, huge credit to CCM. So one of the things you will notice on this is that I didn't use speed skin on the sliding surface. Um, so I did on the face, that speed skin right there, normal Gen Pro, um, carbon or weave or whatever companies are calling it now. Um, I didn't use speed skin for a very specific reason. I don't like it. I have, I used the speed skin on the premiere for my sliding surface. And I found that it would stick, um, it would stick on the ice in certain conditions. And it wasn't like rough conditions either. It was like dry conditions. So if the ice was like sitting for a while and it wasn't just freshly cleaned, I found whenever I pushed off, the pads just totally stuck on the ice. And um, I've seen a lot of other feedback of people saying that their pads feel like they get stuck too. And I totally agree with it. Uh, I think it's a very specific fine line of where the speed skin slides better than their normal Gen Pro and Carbon Gen Pro. And it's on a specific angle your pad has to be in at specific ice conditions. But it, I found it slid worse overall when all things considered. So that was very disappointing. And that's why I did not use it here. Um, I will have a video on speed skin and a few other things on this coming later on. So make sure you check that out. I'll link it in the description when it's done. Anyways, so back to these pads. Um, so that is why I did not get speed skin here and why... I guess I should talk about sliding now on these. Um, these are the second worst pads I've ever worn sliding. Okay, maybe they're the third. Um, the worst being my Premieres with Speed Skin. Uh, the next worst being my Coho 588 Pros, and then these. And even with the Carbon, this pad just slid poorly. Um, I, I bought, I've been buying CCM pads, the 588, sorry, the Premier 2s, and then these to try to relive my enjoyment of the 588 Cohos I had. And my complaint about the Cohos where they were heavy and they didn't slide well. I never got back to that feeling. I don't, there was something about them that I really loved when I wore them um, and I played really well in them, but sliding was awful. So I found I had to adjust my game to it. Um, and going to these, I didn't feel that same feeling I had with the Cohos, same with the Premieres, and the sliding was still bad. Now I'm gonna have people tell me that or comment and say their pads slide great and they're amazing and I don't know what I'm talking about, that's fine. My personal experience with these pads and the premieres was extremely disappointing. For this pad specifically, I would notice when I play, I play a lot of back-to-back -back games, I would notice that between the end of the first game and the beginning of the second game, the pads felt like totally different pads. So it was pretty ridiculous to the, like, to the point of where I'm, I was surprised. And after the first game, like, okay, getting a bit tired, like took some shots, whatever. Um, pad, like, I, I felt sluggish in the crease. Like, like what's kind of wrong with me? And then I would go to the other game and I would get in warm ups and I'd slide and these things would just fly across the crease. And I was like, it, it's, it's really, it was really confusing me. Um, Bauer is really, really good with their new tech tech to be good sliding in all conditions. Obviously they're better when the ice is fresh and wet, they slide really well. When it gets cut up, they slide less well, but they still slide well. Same with Brian's. These slide okay to begin with, 
and then just poorly if the ice conditions aren't perfect. And it's really disappointing. And it was one of my biggest complaints about these. Um, so yeah, I like, I, there's something about this design and I'm not sure what it is, but there's something about this design, what CCM is doing with their inner calf, calf, knee and like gusset that is just making these pads slide poorly. I'm not sure if it's how stiff, like this isn't that hard, but my brines aren't that hard either. And the brines slide way better. So I'm not sure what exactly that is. Something here is not, it's just not working right. And it, 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 I'm going to say it doesn't feel like dragging. It just feels like it just doesn't slide well. And I'm not, again, I'm not sure what that is. Um, I, I can't suggest to CCM what they should do better because I don't know what would fix it. I just know every other company does it better right now. So that's extremely disappointing on that end. A few things I do like about this, or I want to talk about about this. Um, one is this material buildup. Um, I've seen a lot, some of these pads where this is really, really tight on CCMs. Obviously mine is not, I'm not sure if this is going to cause an issue or not. Um, I've checked some of my other pads out. My brines have a bit of like movement here, but I noticed it when I was looking at the side of these pads and it was just something I noticed and I wanted to call out on because some other people's didn't. Um, I don't know if that's, that was an issue. I don't think it was an issue but it is what it is. Uh, this side piece is also very stiff, so it does stay solid with your leg, which is good. I didn't find these pads. Oh, actually, I'll talk about that in a second. Down here, the boot, you have decent, or the other good thing CCM is doing, sorry, is that they do have um, no nylon basically to wear anywhere on here. And the other really good thing is CCM kind of extended where the seam is. Um, on the premieres and some of the pads I've seen, the seam, I think it was just my premieres, had the seam up here. So the nylon was up on this edge. So that nylon would wear out because it would touch the ice. It's more down the side, means that the Gen Pro will take the wear and not the actual nylon itself, which is great. CCM adding um, this piece right here is really good too, because this spot rub ends up rubbing on the ice. So that's a good reason that that's Gen Pro. Maybe that's what's causing this pad to slow down is that this rubs too, I'm not sure. But if that's rubbing, I'm a little bit concerned about this spot right here, but I have a feeling it will stay recessed with everything else. Um, so I'm not totally worried about that and there is no wear there. So it, it might not be that bad. Um, one spot I do, so this, I, I always used to look for pads that had really deep channels like this on the foot. So your foot was always protected. I don't think it really matters anymore. Um, but it was kind of a thing, me remembering my childhood days of pads with big wraps. This, does hit the ice too. So this part when I was playing would get wet because of it hitting the ice. So maybe wrap that with this weave as well or kind of recess it in a bit more. I don't think it needs to be that tall, but uh, actually you can see right there. You should, hopefully you can see, I can kind of see it where there's a bit discoloration just from the sliding area right there. So again, I want to bring that out. Um, actually one interesting thing, you can see a puck mark right here. So. One reason I get really stiff pads is I'm, I don't like thigh rises that can bend in from pucks, especially for people jamming and stuff like that. So that's why this stiff pad was a decent, or why I wanted this. Um, I actually got hit with a puck, you can see right here, and that puck went in and it hit right there. I felt the pad bend at my knee and it went through my legs. Very, or let's see, hit my puck, hit my pad, bent in the knee, went through my legs. Very rare goal. I'm not gonna blame that on the CCMs, but I did have that happen with my what, two X's and just hit that and just bounced off and it didn't bend the pad. But that's not a huge thing. It's just because of the kind of bottom break. It moved a little bit, but again, not a huge issue. Just want to call it out because it was something interesting I experienced. Okay, so let's look at the boot really quick. So we'll open this up a little bit. This toe tie system is awesome. Um, I really, really like what CCM did here. Yes, it's just an elastic strap like that. Um, I, I kind of like the ones that wrap a bit better, um, just so you know, you're never gonna get any piece of Velcro like sticking on things, but this sizing is perfect and they did a good job with that, so nothing really overhangs. Um, the material they use though is very nice and I have to give them credit for that. You have metal grommet, right there. I think that's a grommet right there. So you have your tie off. I had to tighten these a bit. Then you have this really thick cord. So this cord, obviously there's elastic inside here, but it's really thick. 
it's really nice. Um, it's much nicer than the one that was on my Brian's genetics pads. So that is good. I'm happy they changed that or, or like happy that they have a better option there. These are for sale at local stores. I actually bought a pair as a backup. I have a couple pairs of backup now, but I really like these ones to the point where I ended up grabbing them. So I want to call that out. Um, so the boot, the boot does come, well, this is an option of removable bootstrap. I think this is the most one of the most complicated, annoying bootstrap systems there are because you have to feed this plastic in and then turn it. And then it's just such a pain. Um, it was so hard to get out, especially this one that doesn't move. This one was a little bit easier, but this one's kind of around wraps. So it was so annoying to get out. Uh, I did a video on how to get that out, but I feel like there's a better solution to this than using these. Um, but I guess it is what it is. These are the new straps that they've been using. They're called like the Q, Q, CK or something. I can't remember exactly what it is, but they're not leather anymore. They're plastic and they're thinner. So they're lighter to save weight. Also save costs. Um, but I, I took those off. You see people wearing those. And if you want straps, they're still there. Boot, all nice leather, which is really nice. So you'll get less wear there. Gen Pro, when I say leather, I mean Gen Pro. Gen Pro does weigh a bit more than nylon. So you are getting a bit more weight there. These pads are crazy light anyway, so it doesn't really matter. You can see the knee block. Again, CCM has really good customization in here for ordering different things. So you can get these pretty different. You can get different style knee, knee flaps here. You can get this tighter or looser. Um, you can get Nash, I think, through here. So that's all nice for CCM. Everything through here is pretty plush. The knee's not super soft because it doesn't have that. I didn't get a cradle in here, so I just got the pad. Um, but you can get this as soft a cradle. Here is one of the areas I kind of want to where I think CCM is kind of behind the times a bit. Um, I do like how this is cut so it kind of molds with your leg. I'm gonna do another video and talking about CCM as a whole, but I think this could be different material. Um, CCM has a bunch of like moisture wickening stuff on their player gear, which could have been used here. Maybe it's not necessary, but this nylon, they used to use just this nylon everywhere. And then they pulled this one over from the 3.9. I always thought this nylon material was pretty interesting. I liked it. Um, and I, th I was like, well, I, I think this is better than the other one. So it's nice to see them pulling it down here, but I think they could have used better like moisture wickening materials like that. And even gotten rid of just this normal foam and use like uh, their U foam on their player stuff instead of this foam. But I'll get to that in a different video. It just, and kind of in the summary too. Anyways, so Standard stuff, but good job. This is kind of CCM's smart smart professor strap type thing. Um, that's supposed to keep your leg kind of really tight to the actual pad. I like this strap system quite a bit. Reason being, I like this leather piece. Um, it gives it a support you need, but it is adjustable, right? So you can tighten this or loosen it. Right now it's at its, well, I just screwed it up, but it's at its loosest setting. And honestly, I found, I tried to wear these pads as loose as possible to get a better five pole seal. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and but I like this idea. I just don't. I don't think it works as well on this style of pad than it does on the Vaughn system for professor straps. But it is stretchy, which is nice, and I like that. So it didn't really interfere with my leg movements once I didn't tighten it all the way, um, and it felt comfortable in that sense. So it's good for that. Uh, the I said that I tried to wear this pad really loose. Um, the reason being, so there's no calf pillow here, which companies like Brian's do. And I found that without me really slamming my knees down, uh, pucks would go slide underneath. Now this is black, so you can't really see it, but I did have a couple pucks slide right here. Hopefully that will be visible. Um, and yes, the answer is get better and drop faster, but like the optics kind of cheat for you that, and they push the pad down. I found this one, I had to be really like I would think the pad was totally sealed and it wasn't. These pads play like almost boxy and it, I find all CCM pads with the LeFerve design um, kind of feel somewhat the same way where they feel boxy and they kind of feel like they're like hanging off your leg. I, not that these were like I wore them that loose they felt like they're hanging off my leg but it was, they feel like really different than I found any other pad I've ever worn. Um, and with that, I always thought they were covering the ice all the time and they sometimes weren't just because they didn't have like that thing help pushing it down. So that's why I wore them really, really loose. It's like, 
it's a per the, my vapors don't do that either so I can wear them even looser than I can wear these um, and it's it's not something that's gonna help you but it's just something to think about and I want to point that out so one of the things about this pad too is what I um, with this strap in order for me to, so I have this weird OCD thing and this isn't a huge issue, but I just want to bring it out. So I think CCM kind of took a step backwards when they went to um, elastic strapping and this Velcro strapping compared to their old just leather strap M players or goalies. And the way these pads are kind of made, they're made to be worn very loose. When I mean like everything full out and you could really do that with the leather straps. Um, I find you can't do that as much with the Velcro straps because before with the leather straps, you could do all the thing loose, but then keep the one knee strap tight. So it's kind of there with this. I found that if I wore them really loose, it would be kind of too much, especially on the knee. Um, and then my OCD kicks in where I always have to make sure the Velcro is all like attached like that. Um, and doing that, I couldn't get this loose enough. So I would have to go, like kind of like that and wear it like that. Again, this is me totally nitpicking, but it's something that I, I feel, and I'm curious of why I couldn't, can't like bring back my love for the Coho 588s that I really liked. And I think it's because of the straps, because on those they just had leather straps and a, a Velcro or a, like this type of knee strap. And I love them and I wore them super loose. I think that's kind of something similar why I'm not enjoying C these CCM pads as much recently. Obviously you can still order these with leather straps on them and you can wear them loose like that. But this is how this pad comes stock like off a shelf is without any um, one for the weight savings reasons. But that's, I feel like CCM kind of got away from what made them awesome, but at the same time, aren't trying enough things to be different. And I'll explain that at the end as well too. I'm just leaving a ton of teasers. I really like this material. I don't know what it is. It showed up on their new premier chest protector as well. Um, it's used on the knee block. It feels like a more durable, almost like a rubbery material. And you can see it right here. It's kind of soft. I, I, I like these. It first showed up on the premiere. It's something CCM is doing different. And I think it's a good, good job on them to do that. Um, it's like soft, but it still works really well for what it is. And it gives a bit of grip. I'm a huge fan of that. It's so a good job in, in, in that sense. These I like, I don't like how they're elastic. So it pulls a bit. I like when my knee is kind of really tight because um, I find I can fall out of pads like when you're scrambling. This one wasn't terrible, but I still wish this was tighter in there. I wish it was kind of strung, strung through with a cord and you could undo the cord so you could get it tighter if you want it because this is kind of going like as tight as it is. And because it's elastic, it's still always going to stretch. So it's not going to make a difference. And when you do do that tighter, you could see it really kind of pulls it inwards, which makes it kind of awkward too. So you kind of have to wear it like that. Small things, uh, but I'm talking about everything. So one other thing while I'm back here that I want to call out is um, CCM. I have a lot of people say like CCM quality is really bad and Bowers quality is really bad and the smaller companies are always better. I like, I've had great experience with Brian and stuff like that. But one thing I have found companies like Bauer and CCM have been doing really good recently is this like small little details. And what I mean by that is like these straps. Um, this is, and again, this is really small, but I want to point it out and I want to give credit where due. This is a awesome strap. This is um, like, it's, I think this is speed skin right here with a nice rubber tab, easy to grab on. All their, their ones have tabs on them, which is really nice. And they're really thick too. It's a very small thing, but it's something I think that these companies are doing really well in terms of offering you something that's a little bit better than some of the cheaper competition. Um, again, very minor. I want, but I'm giving credit where it's due. Some companies just do like a nylon strap and then that's it. This has obviously more to it. Um, and I found all the stitching here and stuff like that was pretty well done. And I didn't really find anything out of place on these pads. Um, so I can't like besides this right here, but I can't really, so I can't really complain about that. So pretty, good in that sense. So one other thing before um, we get to kind of the conclusion, CCM does a very, very good job of this. Their, their pads seal the ice phenomenally. Um, so as you can see, no gaps anywhere here. 
everything's nice and balanced all the way through. I had no issues with balance like, like this or anything like that. Um, the boot looks like it's coming off, but it's still there. I found that they didn't seal the ice in terms of like they don't have a calf curl to push it down, but this was phenomenal. It's a really good job on that. Everything stays nice and tight all the way through with no movement at all. Really nice design. It's rare to get, like there's a few companies that do this really, really well. CCM is one of them. So huge props to them there. So when I posted pictures of these pads and like of my set of all my pads, I would ask like, what, what ones are your favorite or what ones do you think are my favorite? And a lot of people would say Eflex, the CCM Eflexes. And I'm kind of surprised at that. Um, but I've also had a lot of people come up to me and ask, which pad should I buy? Or they'll say, I have CCMs. I want the Eflex 4s. They'll say, like, I hear great things about them. And they'll just, or they'll, they'll always be in them. They don't want to get out. And then I'll put them in something else. And then they'll end up loving that other pad a lot more. And they're kind of like, oh, why didn't I try this sooner? CCM does some things really well. They have a very light pad, which I give them huge props for. They have a very stiff core, again, huge props, and a very soft face. I don't think any other company can come close to that combination right now, especially with the face, how soft these pads are for rebounds and how stiff the core is. CCM is by far the best on the market compared to anyone else. With that said, even with the light weight, my legs were more tired and I was more tired using these pads at the end of a game than I was in any pad I've worn since my premieres. Um, because they don't slide as well, they don't like you end up working more over the course of the game. And again, I felt more tired wearing these than I did any other pad I had. Even like the Brian's are much, my Brian's are heavier. These are considerably lighter than anything else I own besides my smaller Warrior G2. So that's very impressive on CCM's part, but I don't think it tells the whole picture. And that's why I'm not really worried about weights. Um, you can get lighter and lighter, but everything has to kind of come together as a whole. And while these felt light, I end up being more tired because of them. So it's kind of a like a weird balancing act. I just didn't find these work really well. These are honestly one of the most disappointing pads and sets of pads I've had ever. And it's not to say that they're bad because they're not bad. They do, like I said, they do that one thing really, really well that no one else can really compete on. But I was so disappointed in the sliding. And I was so just disappointed how they didn't seal, like, like they didn't help with the seal or anything like that. Like I found Premier sealed the ice pretty amazingly. Like they kind of helped push it down. This one, not as well. I was expecting, I think I was expecting something out of these that I just never got. Like I was like, and this is really bad for me to say, but I was watching NHL goalies and I was watching just their movements and stuff like that. Like Curtis McElhinney made a save in the playoffs wearing like a set of these. It was a ridiculous save. And I watched him like, wow, that's like, that's awesome. And I was just, I watch how goalies move with their legs and how the pad seals and stuff like that. I'm like, I want that pad. I want to try that. It looks like it might work for me. And it just didn't. Um, but the big thing about it is sliding. Obviously, I'm not an NHL goalie, so I need all the sliding help I can get. With that said, I have a friend who bought a pair of these um, instead of two X's. And he was worried about durability and stuff on the Bowers, so he ended up with these. And I said, well, what, like, why they don't slide well and he said you're right but because they slide slower it's easier for me to control my slides because i just push off harder and i don't go as far and i'm like well but that time when you need that speed on that two-on-one breakaway the tap in or something you need to get over there you're not going to have it because these slide slower than vapors or brines and so that was but that was his reasoning for it and he like I, it's tough for me to justify right these aren't, like I said, a bad pad, um, but I have a hard time recommending something to someone when I know that, or uh, like, unless you really want that super dead face and the super stiff core and this feeling that LeFerve pads only give, I don't recommend people getting into these. I recommend so people trying something else because the big part for me is sliding and the performance on this is just bad. And super disappointing in that regard um the the thing about ccm as well is i feel like they have to be dragged kicking and screaming into the modern era for doing anything for their goalie gear i think they're far too comfortable with their market and they have it they have a niche and it's a pretty big niche but they have a niche and they're afraid to try new things 
and kind of push the boundaries and like update everything. For the longest time, CCM were the heaviest pads on the market by far until the Premier 2 when they got lighter and then until these. Like, yes, they trimmed it down, but it took how many generations of other pads to get there? Um, Warrior G2s have been out for how many years? And these are, they're still, he still heavier, mind you, but they're close now. Um, the sliding material, they use speed skin, but speed skin was used on road hockey, pa <laughs> road hockey pads on the E-Flex 100 lines. So I don't think speed skin was designed for ice and it was kind of a reactive or like a reaction kind of, oh crap, we need something for this. Um, because everyone else had a new piece of material for it, for sliding. Like Bauer has their Cortec, Brian's has Opti Slide, Vaughn now has Opti or Quick Slide, and Warrior had their Air Glide, but Warrior's pads slid amazing anyways. So I don't think that this was designed for speed on pads. If it was, I think it would have showed up on NHL pads first. I think this was either made because it's a thinner material, which it definitely seems like it's a thinner material when you compare it to the, the weave right here, and it might be a cheaper material. Um, again, thinner means less material used. And I think that they thought, oh, we can throw that on there. We can say something about how it's like textured, so not all the uh, surface area is on the ice and it will move better. So I don't buy that for speed at all. Um, I'll have a video about CCM and tech going forward about just explaining why I'm disappointed. And I'll talk about like the blocker and stuff like that. So check out that. But it just comes into one big conclusion of me just being disappointed in these. Um, I really wanted, I thought these were going to be like my core rotation pads and they absolutely weren't. And I couldn't wait to get out of them. I wore them. I had, I took me like four games to get a win in them. And that that's coming from where I was undefeated in the season. I'm not blaming the pads. It's just, it all kind of came down on itself at once. And it was just really frustrating. Again, these aren't bad. They're just lacking behind everything else. Um, they don't really like push the bar. This is a nice change and that's about all they've done. Um, and I'm really curious to see how their access line is because I want them to try something else. Let's try something different. Use different materials here. Use carbon in the face to get bigger rebounds. Obviously not on this one because this one's soft. Um, but do something different and really make, like, make a change for the better and don't just be comfortable and with where you're at. And like CCM is killing it in the goalie market. Oh, they have a lot of pros. A lot of people really like it. I've had a lot of people come in and say, oh, I want carry prices pads. And then they try on another pair and they're like, oh, I like these better. But they have what they like. They know what their niche is. They know what their market is. I think they have to push outside of it and try something different to get a better product out there. Because I'm pretty disappointed in these. Um, and that's about it. Is Yeah, this is obviously one of the none of the of gear. And this, like, this isn't a bad pad, like I said, it just has parts that aren't good to it and it's disappointing. Um, also, if anyone is telling you, from my personal experience, speed skin just is not good. Um, I've used a lot of pads and I will continue to use a lot of pads and speed skin is one of the worst materials I've used. And so if someone on social media is telling you otherwise, think hard. Think hard where they got those from. That's all I have to say about that because I don't see NHL guys using speed skin for the last two years. And the pros get the stuff that they feel is the best and not just for marketing reasons. So watch that come back to bite me when everyone's wearing speed skin in 2020 season, 2019, 2020 season. But for so far, it's been true. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully it was helpful and informative. Um, Remember to subscribe to me on YouTube, hit that little bell so you get notified when I make videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, how to get gear like this so I can do reviews on, talk about it, make content and all that jazz. Um, also, what else I have? Watch out for the catching glove and blocker review. They will be linked in the description and at the end of this video. And please feel free to rip me apart in the comments if you don't agree with this, that's okay. Not everyone agrees with gear. I am always critical when I think companies could do things better and they don't for either being cheap or being afraid to be better. And I think that both of those are kind of relevant here. So anyways, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.